welcome everybody boys and girls and uh, viewers this is busy bee class we are on lesson seven this is adventurous club from new life sda church before we begin our lesson today i would like to request the adventurer to lead us in a word of prayer let's pray thank you lord of this day that you have given to us Bless us, guide us, protect us, be with us as we start this lesson. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm Teacher Josh. And I'm Teacher Anne. And my name is Shanice Anoche. Thank you, Shanice. Now, boys and girls, Shanice is going to lead us, or rather remind us, of the basic requirements in our class, that is, He's, she's going to lead us in the Adventurous Pledge, the Law, and finally, she will do for us the Adventurous Song. Shani, can you stand up and give us the Adventurous Pledge? Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. Thank you, Shani. Can you now remind us of the adventurer's law? Jesus can help me too. Be obedient, be pure, be true, be kind, be respectful, be attentive, be helpful, be cheerful, be thoughtful, be reverent. Thank you. Now sing for us the adventurer's songs. We are adventurers. At home, at school, at play, we are adventurers. We are learning every day to be honest, kind, and to be like Jesus through and through. We are adventurers. Thank you. Salute down. Now, have a seat. Shani, remind us of the memory verse for this lesson. My memory verse comes from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formed and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Thank you, Shanice. Boys and girls and viewers, our memory verse is reminding us of the creation story on how God created the universe from the first day, the second day, the third day, until he reaches the last day. And in verse 2, in chapter 2, it gives us an account of what God did after the creation is over and that is after creating man that is you and me on the sixth day then on the seventh day he rested and that is the culmination of our sabbath day so boys and girls god worked in a systematic way whereby he did his all works from the first day that is from sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday then he rested on the sabbath day and that is what we are also expected to do that we do all our calls we do all our works during the week and when it comes the sabbath day then we commune with god boys and girls on sabbath day is our resting day the same way god rested on that particular day and he sanctified it is that okay yes, yes. thank you teacher josh uh, from there we are going to discuss about home safety. Home safety in relation to fire. What we can do in our homes when we get, uh, we get uh, those uh, unfamiliar circumstances when we go through fire. There are so many things in our houses that could trigger fire. One, it could be electricity, maybe a gas that explodes, and we experience fires in our houses. What should we do when we get fires in our houses, Shanice? You can look for a way to move out, then you shout, everyone see you want some help. 
very good. Yes, you can get out, get, uh, try and get out of the house, lock the door behind you, and once you're out, stay out and call for help. And there are some things that we need to do to ensure that we don't experience fires. One, we should have some alarm system that we, like the one that have smoke detectors yeah. that would detect whenever there is smoke and it would ring. So ensure the alarm is on, uh, install fire extinguishers to make sure whenever fire is up we are able to, uh, to put it off. Now, there are some other areas that we need to look at in regard to safety, in terms of home safety, outdoor safety, weather safety and people safety. We are supposed to focus uh, four safety rules in regard to any of the four items. Now, in this case, we are going to focus on home safety. Home safety is whereby in our homes, we need to ensure that everybody in that home is safe. There are things that we need to look at to ensure there are, no, there are minimal injuries in the house. First, ensure the basics, you ensure the door is locked and closed so that strangers cannot just come in. The second one, you can ensure that the floor is ever dry to avoid sliding and falling, causing injuries. Another thing that we should do is that we should keep all the sharp objects far from reach from children, keep all the, uh, the fire lighters and matches far from reach of children, keep medicines in lockable cabinets. That is under home safety. Under outdoor safety, when children go out there, in this case I refer to kids going out there to play, N ensure that kids don't wait the outside there alone. And if they get lost when they are outside there, kids should ensure that they stay where they are. They can look for help from a, like a counter. If you're in a supermarket, go to the counter. The kids should also know their physical address, they should know their name, they should know contact details of their parents. So that when they walk to the counter, they can always give the contacts of their parents and they can be easily reached. Another thing when they are playing outside there, like for example cycling, they should put on the right gear when they are doing their activities. They should put on a helmet. Then when uh, you go out there to play also, ensure the area that you are playing, you don't go near to fences where there are bushes to avoid you being pricked. Okay, Shanice? Okay. Yes. yes, teacher, and that is very bright. Another aspect that we should introduce is to teach our children to know these safety rules. We scribe them and make them memorize them at home so that they know both outdoor and indoor safeties. The last one that I can just add on is to make sure that our children are never left alone. Maybe we get somebody to assist them. If they are indoors, they should be having somebody, an adult who can take care of them. And when they are going outside, they can also be led by somebody who is capable of detecting or guiding them when they are doing their plays. Very well. And the last one, we should set body boundaries. You know there is a good touch and a bad touch. Whenever they are outside there, they could like uh, call for help or scream when they sense that the, that kind of a touch is not good. Thank you. Now, Shanice, we are also going to focus on areas of natural calamities like emergencies whenever something happens. For example, what should we do when an earthquake happens? Now, I know that one would be a bit strange for like the, these ages, but what you should do when it, in case of an emergency like an uh, earthquake? If you are outside, move far from buildings and trees. If you are inside, drop, cover, and hold on. For example, if in, the, in your house you, ho you drop down under some furniture like a table or a bed and then hold on to that furniture and cover your head to avoid injuries from falling objects. Now, and uh, in emergencies like flood, flood is when they are heavy downpour and you don't even know where it's deep, where it's shallow. In such an emergency, please do not dive or try to swim in waters. Keep off and try, and if an uh, announcement is done that you evacuate, please evacuate to higher grounds. Teacher Josh, do you have anything else that you could add on the issue of uh, floods? Yes, in the issue of floods, we should also try and tell our children to keep off during rainy season. In fact, they should not be walking barefooted so that they don't subject themselves into such kind of calamities. So boys and girls, it is always very good to take care and take charge of every child or everybody that is around us. 
The next thing, we should always call for help in case of any danger. Just shout, help, help, help. Whoever is next to you or almost in a proximity that will be able to understand will always come for, uh, to your rescue. Thank you, Titia Jawash. Another emergency that would happen, it is a natural occurrence, is the lightning and thunder. It's an interesting part because when lightning happens when you're outdoor, so I was uh, amazed by what I was able to learn, that you're supposed to keep a distance. Currently we are keeping distance because of the calamity that is, has hit us, but even in this case of lightning and thunder, you're supposed to keep at least a distance of 15 feet if you're in a crowded place. Another thing, you are, not, you are supposed to stay away from trees. And then at, uh, if you're in the house, you're supposed to uh, switch off all electronic equipment. You're supposed to avoid coded phones in the house to avoid thunder. That's very great. We are learning every day. Yes, it we is usually a learning every day. experience. So boys and girls, take note of these experiences and the exposures that we are getting. It is a good time that the Lord has given us to learn from things that can harm us. Yes. We can also share them with our neighbors and our peers. Thank you, Teacher Josh. And uh, at, as we wind up that section, we are supposed to do a poster on, any, on uh, the three uh, emergencies and we can actually indicate the safety rules that we can be able to apply for us to, to stay safe. Thank you. So adventurers, boys and girls, the kind of posters you're supposed to do is uh, the safety rules for you when you are faced with these kind of emergencies. For example, we covered earthquake. This is a poster whereby you are supposed to do such a poster and make sure you learn the safety rules about the earthquake, that the one that you are, you are able to see on your screens. The second one is about the floods. When uh, you are faced with floods, there are some safety rules. This is a similar, this is a poster that you are supposed to do and submit to your teachers. When it comes to thunder and lightning, this is another poster that you are supposed to do and submit to your teacher and make sure you learn the safety rules. We have two for lightning and thunder. The other one is a bit detailed, but you are able to learn, read through and learn and make sure you implement when faced with such kind of emergencies. Thank you, boys and girls. Boys and girls, all this information that we are sharing, we can have the posters, stick them somewhere on, in, our, in our houses so that you can always check on them. Again, any other information that you have as an adventurer, as a parent, let's share them out. Any other comment that you feel that can still spice our, in, uh, our discussion or spice the information that we are giving out, Kindly feel free to comment, to add, and also share with the rest. Thank you, boys and girls. For, from this session, for this session, we are moving to... Now we are going to the activity. Boys and girls, now we are going to an interesting part. Whereas I know boys and girls you love coloring. Now we are going to do excess, uh, our work, uh, from our workbook, uh, page 16. And this is how page 16 looks like. You're supposed to cut this part, cut out the windows, color this, this uh, perfect 10, God's perfect 10 in your own colors, and then you're able to pin it to the next one and reflect on the fifth commandment of obeying your parents. Now, Shanice is going to demonstrate how to do it. Boys and girls, you are going to have something like this, like what you are going to see on your screens. You are supposed to use a pin to uh, match the, both the God Perfect Ten and the Commandments and reflect on uh, the Fifth Commandment as per our lesson here, where, where we are supposed to honor our parents. This is the final product of what you are supposed to submit to your teachers. Thank you, boys and girls. Boys and girls and viewers, we are now getting to the last aspect of our lesson for this particular lesson and that is the award. Award for this lesson seven is about potato. Potato award 
is going, the importance of this award is basically to help us, the learner and the teacher to interact or with the parent in learning the nutritional values and the importance of this particular word. And in this aspect, we are talking about a potato. We are also going to learn the differences, the different types of potatoes that we have. The English one and the sweet, the sweet potato and the importance, both economically and the nutritional values. So I'll welcome you to this particular session so that we learn together. Teacher Anne, welcome. Thank you, Teacher Josh. Uh, we want to learn about the nutritional benefits of potatoes in general. Uh, potatoes give us potassium. They are very high in potassium, vitamin C, B6, and fiber. They are also rich in magnesium and antioxidants. And lastly, they have resistant starch. Now, the next thing we, we would want to learn is the facts about potatoes. Teacher Josh, what do you know about potatoes? I know that one fact about potato is that it is the second most important cash crop in our land in the sense that we use it to generate income. Thank you, Teacher Josh. Yes, it is the second most important food and cash crop from maize. The second thing that we need to know is that it is grown by approximately 800,000 small-scale farmers and it contributes to over 5 billion Kenya shillings annual income to the, gov to the Kenyan government. And another fact is that one acre of land can produce up to 80 bags of potatoes. Another fact is that uh, potatoes take between three months and six months to grow, mature, and harvest. Another thing is that uh, potatoes do well in uh, uh, they prefer slightly acidic soil between 5 and 7 pH. And uh, the last one, uh, potatoes, they aggressively root and uh, they produce best uh, when planted in light, loose, well-drained uh, soil. How do you grow potatoes? I would ask myself. Potatoes are tubers and they grow underground. And potatoes stem above the ground have attractive but not edible flowers. Now, how many types of potatoes do you know, Shanice? How many of them? Two. Which one and which one? Sweet potato and Irish potato. Very good. And uh, Teacher George, what is the difference between Irish potato and sweet potatoes? Well, what I know about sweet potato is that they are grown using a stem. We can always plant a stem of that particular plant, then it grows, then it will germinate, flower, and give us the potato. While the Irish potato, we use seeds. Thank you, Teacher Josh. Actually, somebody may think that these two are related, but they are very different, despite sharing a common name. Uh, sweet potatoes de uh, belong to a category that they call, it's called Ipomoea batatas, while Irish potato is, uh, it de belongs to a category that we call Solanaceae family, that uh, put, uh, tomatoes, eggplant, and pepper belong to. Another thing that we would want to see a difference in sweet potatoes and, and the other Irish potatoes, that sweet potatoes have more nutrients. They are much more nutritious and more health benefits. Actually, it has vitamin C, vitamin A, that is very good for our eyes. Another, well, uh, Irish potato is less nutritious and less health benefits. Another thing is that the leaves of sweet potatoes are edible, while the leaves of the Irish potatoes are poisonous. And... Uh, there is also a difference in the method of propagation of these two uh, types of potatoes. Uh, sweet potatoes, uh, they use stem tubers to propagate, while uh, Irish potatoes, we use seeds. Another difference is that uh, sweet potatoes are creepy in nature, 
while uh, Irish potatoes are not creepy. They are erect like tomatoes, as I said, pepper and eggplant. Another difference is that uh, sweet potatoes are often related to yams, maybe because of the size, although they belong to the same family, but they are not the same as yams. While Irish potatoes are commonly known as, uh, known as white or regular potatoes. Uh, and the last most important uh, difference is that sweet potatoes have low glycemic index, but can be increased by roasting or baking. While in Irish potatoes have high glycemic index and glycemic load. Somebody may ask, what is glycemic index? Glycemic index is the measure of how quickly the potato converts to glucose in the body. This changes with the processing method, as I have said, because low glycemic index in sweet potatoes can be increased by roasting or baking, while the high glycemic index in Irish potatoes can be reduced by boiling. That is the main difference. Now, I think we're going to do another very interesting thing. We want to see whether a potato can sink or float as compared to an apple. What will sink, uh, Shanice? What will happen if we put an apple in water? The apple will float mm -hmm. and the sweet potato will sink. Yeah, sweet, generally the potato will sink. Why? Because an apple is less dense as compared to water, while Irish or sweet potato is high dense. It means, density means the sweet potato have compact molecules that it is high density. And an apple, the, mole the molecules are spread out, thus it will float. And we are going to do that literally and we are going to show it by example. Chinese, what would sink? The apple will float and the sweet potato will sink. Very good. Now we want you to demonstrate. Take an apple and put it in the water. Wow. What has happened? It has flowed. It is fire. Take a potato and put inside the Irish potato. This is the other one. What has happened? It has? It has sunk. Very yes. good. Now we have learned that uh, the potato has sunk and the apple has floated. Reason being, this one is less dense as compared to water. This one is much more dense compared to water. However, if you put salt or sugar in water, the potato will float because it will also increase the density of water. Thank you so much, boys and girls. Okay, boys and girls, we now come to the end of our session. But before we do that, let's have a recap on the feedback that you're supposed to submit to your teachers. One, we are on lesson seven. And these are the mandatory aspects that you are supposed to do and submit to your various teachers. One is a photo of accomplished work from the workbook on page 16, the way Shani's had shown us on what was being done. And the emphasis is the fifth commandment from the Bible. And then the second mandatory thing that you are supposed to do is a video of adventure reading from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through, so that we bring the aspect of the creation story. And then also tie it up with Genesis 2, verse 1 to 3. The other aspect is a, a recorded video whereby the adventurer is supposed to choose from one of the laid down songs or given out songs. An adventurer is supposed to choose one of the songs. He or she, she should be recorded singing one of those songs. Then it is recorded and sent to the teacher. The other aspect is the demonstration of the aspect of the sinking and the floating whereby we are demonstrating on how an apple is able to float and a potato is able to sink. So that video is supposed to be recorded and sent to the teacher. Then the video of an adventurer at least watching or learning from a video of the safety measures that we talked about both indoors and outdoors. 
he or she can be recorded watching a video of an earthquake or a lightning or a flood taking place in one area then that one is sent to the teacher the last one is a photo of a, vid of a video of an adventurer uh, demonstrating on the posters showing on the dangers on safety issues and dangers and what we can do about these particular dangers boys and girls this is the mandatory aspect, what is supposed to be recorded. Also, you can watch from the demonstration that has been given out from this particular lesson. Then you do yours, record, and send to your various teachers. Otherwise, from us, we want to say goodbye until we meet for next lesson. Bye.